Welcome to Worship St. John's Lutheran Church and friends. It is good that you are joining us today as we come together to pray, to hear God's word, and to share a meal together. Just a couple of announcements about our life. We continue to have in-person worship at 5 o'clock on Saturday and at 9 o'clock on Sunday morning. We would love to see you if you would like to come and be a part of us in the building Otherwise, we are so glad that you are joining us and being a part of our worshiping community. Another announcement about our life together is on Saturday the 24th, this upcoming Saturday at 9 o'clock. We'll be gathering at church for a work day, primarily an outside work day. So if you would like to bring your rakes and your gloves and be part of a community and working on the grounds of St. John's, we would love it if you would come and be a part of that. We do take a breath as we prepare our hearts and our minds for worship on this day. We begin with our thanksgiving for baptism. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, alleluia. Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for water, where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rains to our thirst thirsting earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us as companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts. Shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God, now and forever. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Holy and righteous God, you are the author of life, and you adopt us to be your children. Fill us with your words of life that we may live as witnesses to the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hi, all you amazing children of God. I am so glad that you joined us for worship today. Last week in worship, we heard Pastor Naomi remind us that Jesus says, peace be with you. After Jesus' death and resurrection, those are the words we hear Jesus repeat a lot. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. I hope you've been sharing peace with your family. This weekend, when we hear Pastor Naomi read the gospel, we're going to hear Jesus say, peace be with you. And then Jesus goes on a walk. And he catches up to a couple of guys that are walking to the city of Emmaus. And they're walking and Jesus joins them and they're walking and they're talking and they're walking and they're talking and they don't really recognize Jesus. But they invite Jesus to stay with him because they've been walking and talking and it's getting late at night and it's almost time for bed. And first though, they eat. And when Jesus takes the bread that's at the table and he blesses it and he breaks it and he gives it to them to eat, it's like, oh my goodness, I recognize this person. This is Jesus. He's done this before. Way back on the night before he died, Jesus took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, Rem do this, remember me. And this night, when these men see Jesus break the bread after blessing it and give it to them, they see Jesus. So this is my invitation to you. Whenever you're going to eat, bless the food. Thank God for the food. And when you're finished eating the food or while you're eating the food, look around at all the children of God you're with. Everyone you see is a child of God. Each one of us. And when you eat is a perfect time to take a moment and look at each other and see it. Now in school, you might just see, be seeing the backs of your friends' heads, and that's okay. But at the dinner table at your house or in the car if you're eating fast food, you are with people, children of God. Moms and dads are children of God. Sisters and brothers are children of God. Friends and grandmas are children of God. And so every time you eat, I invite you to bless the food with a grace, maybe. Bless the food, and as you eat it, look at the people around you and think, oh, these are children of God. And remember that God loves each and every one of you so much. Will you pray with me? Hello, God. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for sending Jesus to show us how to love others. Help us to remember Jesus when we eat. And help us to look at the, the people around us as children of God. And we know you love each one of us. Amen. Thank you for joining us. I hope you have a blessed week. The first reading for today is from the book of Acts, chapter 3, starting at verse 12. Peter addressed the people, You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have a murderer given to you and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that is, his Messiah would suffer. 
Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm for today is Psalm 4, and it's to be read responsibly. Answer me when I call, O God of my right. You gave me room when I was in distress. Be gracious to me and hear my prayer. How long, you people, shall my honor suffer shame? How long will you love vain words and seek after lies? But know that the Lord has set apart the faithful for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. When you are disturbed, do not sin. Ponder it on your beds and be silent. Offer right sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. There are many who say, oh, that we might see some good. Let the light of your face shine on us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart more than when their grain and wine abound. I will both lie down and sleep in peace, for you alone, O Lord, make me lie down in safety. The second reading is from 1 John chapter 3, starting at verse 1. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has yet not been revealed. What we do know is this, when he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. For no one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today is a long story from Luke about the resurrected Christ. I'm sitting down because it's long, but it's an important story, and it's a great story. So sit back, relax, and listen to this story. On the first day of the week at early dawn, they came to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered his words. And returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them, who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home, amazed at what had happened. Now on the same day, notice, the same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went to them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. 
Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place these last days? Jesus said to them, What things? They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and beside all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some of the women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then Jesus said to them, Oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, Jesus interpreted to them the things about himself and all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead of it as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed, and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened. And they recognized him. And he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road and while he was opening scripture to us? That same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together, they were saying, the Lord has indeed risen, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. Now Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. Jesus said to them, Why are you frightened, and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. When he had said this, he showed his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses to these things. This is the gospel of our Lord. I don't know that I need to say much more. What a great story. 
the story of the women going to the tomb and finding it empty, Peter checking on them after they told him it is indeed true by going to the tomb, the disciples that decide they just need to take a long walk to clear their heads. And then Jesus comes and joins them on this walk. They don't recognize him. He stays with them because it's near the end of the day, and they say, just come and stay with us. And it is only in the breaking of the bread that suddenly their eyes are opened and they recognize Jesus. How do you recognize Jesus? Is it in breaking of bread? Is it from a hug from a friend when your heart is breaking? Is it knowing that you can take one more breath, just keep taking one more breath or one more step? How do is it that you know that Jesus has joined you on your journey? I think this story of the disciples and how they came to recognize the resurrected Jesus tells us a lot. It tells us that our wounds won't be healed in our resurrected body, or at least they don't disappear. They maybe won't hurt us anymore, but they will still be there. But something fundamentally changed in how Jesus appeared so that the disciples didn't recognize him right away. I wonder, I wonder what it would be like to actually see that resurrected Jesus and be in his presence. One who still is a little hungry and wants a little food? Hmm. The one whose scars are still very visible? the one who comes among his disciples. And did you hear those words again? Peace be with you. The resurrected Jesus says to us over and over again, peace be with you. Perhaps those words are really important because they are repeated. resurrected Jesus does come to us. The resurrected Jesus does come with open hands. The resurrected Jesus does come among us. And the resurrected Jesus does say, peace be with you. There's not much more we need to say. There's not much more we need to hear. Because the resurrected Jesus is with us, bringing us peace. Amen.
We are bold to confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made. Of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ. By the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and to answer us. Living God, in the midst of Easter joy, we are still filled with questions and wonderings. Open our hearts and minds so that the church models repentance and forgiveness and offers peace in the name of Jesus. Hear us, O oh God. Creating God like an amazing artist, you created the universe out of love. Heal your creation where it is in need of restoration. Bring rain to North Dakota and out west, and continue to bring a balance of sunshine and rain so that our fields are ready for planting. Hear us, O oh God. God of all, people in many nations call on you to give them strength and to guide their leaders. Answer their hopes with a peace of Christ as the Spirit works in Minneapolis, Myanmar, Afghanistan, Hong Kong, Ukraine, and with all the national, state, and local leaders. Hear us, O oh God. Healing God. You hear the cries of those in need. Grant to those who are sick and suffering your compassion and nurse them back to health and wholeness, especially Roger and our exhausted essential workers and those fighting COVID infections as new variants grow more widespread. And as our children return to the classrooms for longer periods, sustain their health and the safety of their teachers. Be close to the hearts of Rich and his family. Hear us, O oh God. Loving parent, you have given us such love that we should be called children of God. Reveal yourself to us so that we, in this community of faith, will become more and more like you in our mutual love and bold witness. Hear us, O oh God. God of all times and ages, those who have died in you now see you as you are. We thank you for the life of Sally, which was celebrated here at St. John's this weekend. Assure us of the peace you have promised that we may join her in everlasting life. Hear us, O God. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you aloud in silence, and through sighs when words escape us, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I would invite you at home to find bread or crackers, grape juice, or some wine, so that you too can join in this meal of Jesus. Holy and living God, we praise you for creating the heavens and the earth. 
We bless you for bringing Noah and his family through the waters of the flood, for freeing your people Israel from the bonds of slavery, and for sending your Son to be our Redeemer. We give you thanks for Jesus, who living among us healed the sick, fed the hungry, and with a love stronger than death gave his life for others. On the night before he died, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life-giving death and glorious resurrection, we await your promised life for all this dying world. Breathe your spirit on us and on this bread. Carry us in your arms from death to life, that we may live as your chosen ones, clothed in the righteousness of Christ. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. This is the Lord's table and you are all welcome here for the gifts of God are free. As you take the bread, know that this is the body of Christ given for you. And as you take your wine, know that this is the blood of Christ shed for you. And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ give you strength and peace today and into your life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Wellspring of joy through this meal, you have put gladness in our hearts. Satisfy the hunger still around us and send us as joyful witnesses that your love may bring joy to the hearts of all people. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now until we meet again, receive this benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve our resurrected Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.
some fun.